going to walk through a test on a DFib, uh, executing an integrated workflow using an ESA and an impulse. And here's our DFib. So here we are on our home screen. Uh, we're going to navigate to procedures, and today we'll run this NFPA 99 sample procedure designed for DFib. So we'll launch that, and we both we already have our test devices connected. We'll enter our work order ID, and then do a visual inspection. Take a look at the defibrillator, make sure it's clean and undamaged, etc. Once we get to electrical safety testing, we want to make sure that our DFib is plugged into the equipment outlet on the ESA and that the applied parts are connected as described in the applied parts setup component. Then we'll do an auto sequence of our test. One to zero, our test lead. We're connecting it to the null post. And then clicking zero lead. Once that passes, we'll connect to an earth conductive point on the V-fit. It will give us a chance to turn on the DFib when power is applied from the ESA. And then we can continue. Then we want to reconnect the test lead to a non-earth point. Proceed. So once the electrical safety tests are complete, we'll start with the defibrillator testing section. Um, we'll follow these instructions for the output energy test. So we'll need to reconnect our leads to the impulse. Making sure that we have the correct polarity for these paddles. Into the paddle jacks on the impulse. We can go ahead and connect the ECG leads as well so that waveforms can be simulated. So, because it's highlighted in blue, we know that this test is currently active and it's waiting for a discharge from the DFib. So, we can Look at the set values for this test point and configure that on the DFib before delivering the, the pulse. We'll deliver the pulse and we'll get the data in one QA. It'll move on to the next test point with a different energy selection. And then the final one. So that's the output energy test. We can move on to the charge time test, which requires discharging 14 times at maximum energy and then timing the amount of time it takes to charge and discharge at maximum energy on the 15th try.
Okay, so on the 15th point, uh, we see this graphic down here, which is going to count down for when we want to begin the charge and then discharge immediately once it is fully charged after we click play. So I'll go on and start the countdown. Start charging and then discharge immediately once it's fully charged. And so this timer was counting up as the test went on, and then when, it, when the impulse received the pulse, it saved that time there. So next we'll do the sync time test, which we require the ECG leads be connected between the impulse and the defib so that a shockable waveform can be simulated. So we start the test by clicking, and that will begin simulating a, the shockable waveform. Then we'll want to set the energy as specified in the set values and enable synchronization for the defib. Um, then we can charge and hold down discharge to send the shock. So it passed. And the waveform was converted um, to the display. Next, we'll do roughly the ECG performance test, uh, which involves simulating a performance wave, in this case, square two hertz, and then printing out from the defib and measuring the dimensions of the wave. I'm just going to assume that. Everything looks good. And then we can confirm that we've done the inspection and put the sticker on the device. And that's it.